Our next topic is about the latent image formation. At the end of the topic, students will be able to appreciate the role of technical factors in the production of image on the rage graph, differentiate the theories of latent image formation, and sequence the events that lead to the production of latent image on the film. What is a latent image? Latent image is defined as the invisible image produced on the film after exposure prior to development. After exposure, changes has occurred on the chemical composition of the silver halide crystal. However, because it is very small, our naked eye cannot see it. Latent image can only be visible through the development process. The developer solution enhances the changes that happen to the silver halide crystal, so our naked eye can see these changes. The latent image becomes manifest image after development. The production of latent image is actually the first step of the photochemical process. Before we discuss the latent image formation, let us again discuss the emulsion and the silver bromide crystal. Silver bromide crystal is made up of silver and one of the families of halogen, the bromide. Iodine is also used but in smaller quantity. The crystal is created by combining the silver nitrate and potassium bromide. During this process, the silver gives off one electron that becomes attached to the bromide. The silver then becomes positively charged because it now lacks one negatively charged electron. It is called silver ion. The bromide becomes negatively charged because it now have an excess of one negatively charged electron. It is called bromine ions. Their charges causes them to be attracted to each other, causing them to bind known as ionic bond. This ionic bond creates what is called cubical crystal lattice formation. However, in silver halide crystal, this lattice formation is not perfect. There are imperfections in the crystal caused by impurities from the gelatin, which is the binder of the crystal. Although this may sound negative, but these impurities is necessary for latent image formation. Again, to summarize, emulsion is a suspension of silver bromide and certain impurities in gelatin. Silver bromide is formed by reacting silver nitrate and potassium bromide. During manufacturing process, the silver and the bromide becomes an ion. Ion is defined as an atom that has either many or few electrons than the protons. The unlike charges of the two ions causes the formation of what is known as the univalent ionic cubical lattice formation. In unexposed silver halide crystal, the bromine ions usually occupy the surface of the crystal, giving the crystal a negative surface, and the silver ions occupying the center of the crystal. And somewhere in the crystal, there are sensitivity specks caused by impurities in gelatin. Now, let us discuss how latent image is formed. Latent image formation goes three-stage process. First is the effects of exposure. Exposure in medical imaging is capable of undergoing photoelectric and Compton interaction. Both releases high-energy electrons necessary for latent image formation. Immediately after exposure is the nucleation process. Nucleation is the step that creates the two atom spec, which made the latent image stable. There are several theories that exist on how latent image is formed, but the two that we will discuss are the most acceptable, and these are the Gurney-Mott theory and the Mitchell theory. And finally, the last step is the growth process, wherein the two atom spec grows to become development centers. In the effects of exposure, you might remember that photons under diagnostic energy range interacts through photoelectric and Compton interaction. Interaction usually occur at bromine ions since they are located at the surface of the crystal. Both interaction releases high energy electrons through ionization of either the inner shell electron in photoelectric interaction or outer shell electron in Compton interaction. 
When electrons are released by bromine ions, they become neutral and they migrate out of the crystal into the gelatin. This is possible because the gelatin has some photographic properties that it provides an attraction for neutral bromide. So recombination of bromide and the pre-electron is no longer possible. The process disrupted the crystal lattice formation. Because of this, they are no longer held in place by their ionic bond. Ions in the crystal are now free to migrate and move around. As we have mentioned, bromides migrate out of the crystal, leaving the silver ions, pre-electrons, and sensitivity specks in the crystal. This is how an unexposed crystal looks like. The crystal lattice formation is intact and the surface of the crystal take on a negative charge. On the other hand, crystals that have already been exposed to radiation look like this. There are areas in the crystal wherein the crystal lattice formation is disrupted and what is left are just the silver ions, the free electrons, and somewhere the sensitivity specs. Now, let us discuss the nucleation process. As I have mentioned already, we will discuss two theories of latent image formation. First is the Gurney-Mott theory, also known as the classical theory. There are five step process. First, an electron that has been released by exposure, who is now free to move around the crystal, will come in contact with and is captured by a trapping center and temporarily lo localized. Once the electron is localized, the speck becomes negatively charged because of the presence of the negatively charged electron and provides an attraction to a positive charged silver ion. Therefore, a mobile positively charged silver ion may migrate to this center and form the first silver atom when combined with the electron. Unfortunately, a single silver atom is unstable. Separation may occur and stage 1 and 2 may happen again. This happens at a very long and very short exposure time and explains the reciprocity failure in the region of solarization. Fortunately, during its short life, the single silver atom can act as a trap for another electron. If another silver ion is attracted to this site, then a stable two-atom spec is formed and is called latent sub-image center. These two spec will no longer dissociate. The other theory is Mitchell theory, also known as the modern theory. Mitchell theory is distinguished from Gurney-Mott theory by describing that sensitivity spec was originally shallow and useless, but the passing of a free silver ion on the spec deepens it. This is the first step. When the speck is already deep, a free electron released by exposure and a silver ion approach the trap together and immediately join together to form a silver atom. Mitchell called the silver atom a free image center. Unfortunately, as in Gurney-Mott theory, the single silver atom is unstable and it dissociates into a silver ion and electron. Fortunately, the single silver atom acquires a second silver ion. A free electron arrives before the escape of the second silver ion and immediately joins together. Thus, a stable two-atom spec is formed and is called a latent sub-image center. The last stage is the growth process. Growth is the enlargement of latent sub-image center until it becomes development centers. At least 10 silver atoms are needed for it to become developable. In the growth process, the step four and five of the nucleation process is just repeated until enough silver atoms are formed in the spec. At the end of the growth process, the silver halide crystal has produced 10 black metallic silver atoms somewhere within the crystal. There may be several of these centers in the crystal, but this change cannot be detected by our naked eye because it was too small for the eye to see. This change will have to be enhanced by developer solution 
by converting all silver ions within the crystal to black metallic silver. This ends our presentation. You may now take your quiz. Thank you.